Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Um, I've got four pinots here sitting next to me and um, I'll just dig into them. I've got how many countries? Three countries, two from Chile, one each from uh, the US and France. And we're starting with France uh, with Louis Jadot Cote de Bonne Village 2011. Let's give it a whirl. I stick my nose in there, it's classic Jadot. Um, it's, um, sometimes the reds are just, when they're young, they're almost a bit too stern for their own good. Uh, it, it feels like there's a mass of fruit there behind it, uh, and it's quite tasty fruit. It's on that slightly uh, plummy red berry character. Uh, but this is, yeah, it feels like you're going to have to fight through to get to it. Let's taste it and see whether that's correct. And yes, it's, uh, <laughs> it's almost like open today, come back tomorrow style of wine. Um, I like the, um, the, there's a generosity about the depth of flavour, but then there's this sort of whack of saying, stop enjoying yourself. Uh, I'm supposed to be here and I'm supposed to be uh, firm and tannic. Uh, so I would, mm, yeah, I think, how much is it? Sixteen and a half quid. Um, I think at that price, I would, uh, to see it at its best, yes, I'd almost like open it at lunchtime and drink in the evening or maybe even open it one night and uh, try it a little bit then and a little bit the, the night after. But at the moment, it really is that slightly forbidding style, which um, which some people love. Uh, but uh, I, I, I love them when they're mature, but at this stage, they can be a little bit awkward. I think that there is a good wine in there waiting to come out, but uh, if you just sup it straight out of the traps now, uh, you're going to be maybe a little bit sort of going, hmm, there we are. Second wine. So the next two are Chilean. Um, and um, so this one is Kalfu uh, Sompai. Um, I don't know what Kalfu is. The, um, I, I've just had a, uh, a Chardonnay from, from, from these people. It's a, Kalfu is like an, an offshoot of Vigna Ventiscaro. Um, so, um, and they, there was a Kalfu, I think there's about six, nine wines under the Kalfu label. I think the idea is that they're uh, exploring a cooler bits apart out of their um, normal stomping grounds of uh, I think I think of them as being mainly Colchagua, but they've got all their yali stuff. But anyway, I'll be, I'll shut up. So some pie Pinot Noir, um, two thousand thirteen, and this one's from Leda. Well, it doesn't feel like someone's tried too hard to get uh, a lot lots of flavour out of here. Some there was a period where I think a lot of New World uh, wines with Pinot Noir they were trying to extract and extract. Here, there's a gentleness about it. There's a little bit of red berry, but it's mainly on that cherry side. Um, but it's got this character um, that the more I swirl, the more the more it comes out uh, of reduction. There's a slightly um, rubbery, um, I, I, re reduced black currant parsley is a character I get in a lot of uh, uh, Chilean Bordeaux-based varieties. So the Cabernet Sauvignons and uh, the Merlots and uh, uh, and Carmen Air. Uh, here I, I, get, I get a feeling of, um, I mean it's only 2013 so it's, it's not much over a year old. Uh, so it may just be that it's been bottled and it needs to uh, um, it, it needs to expand to fill the available space. But at the moment, it just feels well, it smells a little bit clenched. Let's try it. Uh, I'm I'm not sure about that. I, I there's some really nice flavours there. Um, I'm just wondering whether um, if it has been recently bottled, it may just be that it's it's showing a, it's a little bit tight, and it may be that um, extra time open. It will start to show uh, a little bit, uh, it'll start to relax a little bit. It just feels a little bit tight and controlled at the moment, with that reduction uh, being uh, quite a prominent factor. Hmm. Let's see whether the second chilling one uh, can uh, trump that one. It, it is Casa Silva, Cool Coast, Pinot Noir. Uh, so this is Colchagua, but it's right at the far west end in Paradones. 2012 vintage, so a year older than the previous one. Let's give this one a whirl. Well, I don't know whether it's the extra year, but this uh, is showing a little bit more uh, velvety generosity from, well, I can't taste velvet, but it feels like it's going to be a, a rounder, richer, let's see, let's have a look whether that's alcohol related. Um, first one is 13.5% and this one is 14%, so not much in it. Uh, but yeah, it feels, um, it, it feels like a, a, a rounder, richer style and it's it, whereas the previous one was on the slightly on the cooler red berry here it's getting into the red berry going on to the blackberries the mulberries and uh, but still still feels fresh and uh, uh, and yeah it feels I think there's going to be a silkier texture here 
smoky oak, um, raspberries, mulberries, a bit of cherry in there. And it is, I, I do like the texture, but then if I have a concern, there's just a little bit of, uh, I feel some of the heat of alcohol on, on the finish. Um, in terms of which I prefer, I probably prefer the Casa Silva uh, of, of those two. Um, and it'd be interesting to see whether the reduction comes down on the... Uh, on the on the uh, on the uh, kalfu, I was going to say kulfi uh, on the on the kalfu, uh, but um, I, I'm not sure. I, I've, I've, I can't remember having a pinot from um, maybe this is only like second or third vintage from Casa Silva's uh, uh, coastal vineyards. They've, they've been doing Sauvignon there for a few years, but uh, uh, pinot's probably taken a little bit longer to uh, uh, to get to a stage where they they're confident about releasing it. It's good, but um, it's good, but dot dot dot. Final wine, um, Edna Valley, uh, Central Coast Pinot Noir, 2012 from California. Let's give this one a whirl. And this feels um, warmer and richer still. It's it's um, it's and it's it's those it's away from the red berries into the dark berries here. Uh, that slightly what I call bruised fruit, like damsons, plums, um, and uh, there's a vanilla sheen about it. I was talking about vanilla on, uh, and oak influence and that smokiness on the previous one. Here it's, it just seems a little bit more obvious um, and it feels it feels higher in alcohol again. What is it? Yeah, 14.5%. So uh, yeah, it's just showing through a little bit too much on the nose. Let's see whether it shows when I taste it. And that, um, that higher alcohol comes through. Um, it, the, the fruit's gone into a, almost like what I call jammy dodger. I don't know whether other parts of the world have jammy dodger biscuits, but it's it's like biscuit with a bit of baked jam in the middle. Um, there's the, the the oak is there. Uh, the fruit is could, could do with being a little bit fresher. Um, and um, yeah, the it's it, it's a it's a fuller, richer, fleshier, riper, oakier style, which I personally don't don't uh, it doesn't hit the right buttons for me. It's okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, it just feels a little bit confected and overripe. Hey. Favourite? Um, I have to say it wasn't a, a, a stunning lineup. I think the Jadot is probably going to be, if I, if I have the choice to drink it when it's at its peak, which will probably be in about like seven or eight years, then, then that. Of the other three, reserving judgment on the Calfu, I'll, I'll, I'll see whether that comes out of its shell. Uh, and um, I suppose maybe, yeah, I've tasted them in order of preference. Best first. I don't know. Hey, see you soon.